Hey everybody, it's me again. <laughs> so this is officially for our uh, 12 Days of Christmas spinning challenge, spin along, but I somebody requested this video to be shown on a spindle. I did talk about like what to do with the spindle in the first video, but if you want to see it on a spindle, then that's what this one is. But this is probably just a good topic in general, so it doesn't have to be spin along related. So I'm going to show you how to uh, two ply and do a thread ply, which is a fun um, texture yarn look on a, you usually see it on a wheel, but we're going to do it on a drop spindle. So what you need is a drop spindle and some thread of some sort. And I said in the other video too, technically you need thread. This is just a, I mean, it's not a special kind or anything. It's just from like sewing store, it's just cotton nylon. So it's strong. You want something strong. That's the main point. Um, thread of any color and, um, I also have, I always use a box, like a shoe box of some sort. This is a tape box. <laughs> and this is for, so you can put, I always do this when I'm drop spindling, anytime I'm plying off the spindle, or if I'm, you know, two plying, I always like to put the ball and the, you know, the two things of yarn in there so that as you're doing it, they're not like running across the floor from you. They're contained in the box. So you're not gonna see the box, but that they're in a box. So just know that. So, this, I don't want my battery to die here, this is just a little scrap of yarn I just took off the spindle that I just used, I used this to demonstrate uh, lots of different things in a webinar, so it is, you know, thick and thin and got stuff in it, so this is definitely some uh, weird yarn, but I think that you can use a very even plied yarn in thread ply, but I actually kind of think, especially if you're like a new spinner and you make really wacky looking yarn, I think it looks cooler if you have kind of wacky looking yarn. So anyhow, what we're going to do is, like I said, so they're in this box. So I'm going to take the end of my thread and put that in the box. And then I'm going to take the end of my yarn and put that in the box. And uh, I'm just going to take the two ends and tie it together. So that's tied together now. And then you just two-ply on a spindle like you normally would. And if you've never two-plied on a spindle, then uh, this is how I do it. Um, let's see. You just attach your two yarns to the base of your spindle. And then you just do exactly like you did when you were plying, you not plying, when you were spinning it, but this time you're plying it. Uh, you just bring it up around the hook. And bring it over to the right, so stand however you need to in relation to your box. Do keep the yarn. I kind of hook it over my hand or my elbow to keep it out of the way. And then you just get the twist going on your spindle. And you're going to be twisting the thread around and then park it. And you're going to be twisting the thread around the yarn, and you see that gives it this cool, like, bumpy-looking texture. So you can definitely, on the wheel, kind of control the twist a little bit better, but you can see, and I've just got my spindle spinning down here, you can definitely kind of build up the twist, park it, and then... You can kind of hold the thread for longer and let you're letting the yarn wrap around the thread and it's the cutting into the yarn of the uh, or you can just let it ply going straight down so it might not be as exaggerated of a look as you would get on a wheel just because you can't control the tension as well but you definitely are still getting that bumpy textured thread ply look on a spindle so uh like i said your biggest challenge is just keeping them from getting twisted together so you might even want to use two shoe boxes but if they get a little twisty that's fine you can just untwist them and you see my little ball of yarn is there and then when you're done just like you did with spinning you unhook and then wrap it down and the first wrap may you kind of have to hold it to you know get it to start going but then you just wrap it onto your spindle you can see it's got the lumpy, bumpy thread ply look that we want where it's spiraled around that. We're just going to apply that on here. And this is a short, I'm down to like next to nothing on this. So, you know, twist it down, then bring it back up. And I'm going to kind of untwist this yarn a little bit. I'm down to, like I said, I didn't have very much to start with. And then you're just going to 
continue, you know, like I said, whatever way, and you can see it's twisting together, whatever way that you start twisting clockwise or counterclockwise, that's how you're going to continue to twist. So you just go through and, you know, continue to twist those two together and then unhook and twist it onto the spindle. And that's how you make thread ply yarn on a drop spindle. And like I said, as you get comfortable doing it, you can definitely play around with tension as far as holding onto the thread, you know, a little longer and letting the yarn really wrap tighter around it. Um, but you can definitely still get that effect on a, uh, a spindle. It might just not be as uh, tight looking as on a wheel because you don't have something pulling it against you. But it definitely still turns out cool. So hope that helps and uh, I will see you later.